All right, welcome to SE Custom Designs. Hopefully you can see me <laughs> behind the bandsaw. We're going to be making uh, several bandsaw box boxes, which are basically going to be drawers, uh, like you see here. Uh, this is the first pass at making them for my wife's sewing table, and she can put things inside. Uh, but uh, so bandsaw boxes, what are they? They're basically boxes, or in this case, drawers. They can be very fancy and look like a, a, a fountain. It doesn't really matter. You, you trace it out, and then you cut it all out on a bandsaw. So that's how that works. We're now on the phase two, the second attempt to make them better. Um, let me just tell you some of the, the gotchas. Uh, some of the gotchas were when I joined up the wood, and this, these are three one by four, four by fours, um, and when I join them up and then let them sit over time, they go in all these various directions, even though I alternated the grain, etc., etc. Um, so it's a good idea, uh, one of those lessons learned, to let the wood sit around for a while, okay? And let the wood do what it's going to do, expand in whatever direction, and then take it over to your jointer and or your planer uh, in that combination uh, and make that whole thing square again and flat okay so that is where we are here and I've got two small ones I don't want to move the camera uh, but over on the wood bench there I've got um, one two three four five six others but I have two that are approximately this size now uh, there's going to be a, a little bit of a change to the way I am going to make the, this, this set here. And oddly enough, one of my subscribers may, several years ago po asked me a question. He said, when, it, when I'm cutting the pieces out, why are you cutting this piece out on the bottom? The answer to that, my friend, is because that's the, how I learned from someone else. And so now years later, I'm thinking that really isn't necessary. At first I'm like, well, maybe it's the, the integrity and the structure and it's going to make it stronger or whatever. But having uh, made thousands and dozens of bandsaw boxes of various sizes, for this anyways, that isn't necessary. Um, and then you have to have a plan. What is your plan? My plan is like this. Um, and I write right on it so that I know. Step number one is going to take to be to take the top off, okay? So if this is our box, as you just saw, right? This is going to be the top. Once you take the top off the main block, then you're going to want to take the back off of then that main block, okay? And that's step number two, and I wrote two on there. Step number three is then going to be to cut out this from the main block that's left, right? All right, and once I cut that out, step three, step four is going to be to take that piece and cut the front and the back off of that piece. Hopefully that's making sense for it. But I'm going to do uh, some of this work now. I'm going to have to change blades. Um, I have a 14 inch jet uh, bandsaw and so well, we're going to have to just go ahead and change that blade. And that brings up another point some subscribers have said, hey you don't have to take the table off when you're replacing the blade. And my mind was trying to wrap around, well, why wouldn't you do that though? It's going to be very difficult to get at the adjustments underneath. You know, these things need maintenance over time. You're going to want to get to this, these bearings, the side and the thrust bearing underneath. And let me tell you, I did try it, my friends. Uh, I don't remember who you were, but I did try it. I'm like, oh, let me go ahead and take this thing and, uh, off and on. Oh my God, was it hard. I was running into all sorts of things under here. And, I'm, and one, once again, I'm scratching my head, like, why wouldn't you take the table off? So that's that little rant. So um, I don't mean anything mean by that. But I just wonder, uh, those users, how much they use bandsaw boxes. Uh, sorry, bandsaws. Um, uh, the great master, Mr. Snodgrass, uh, who I admire tremendously and met in person, um, he, he, one of the first things he says in one of his clinics is, take the table off, it's going to be a lot easier to change your blade. Not only that, you can adjust the other uh, things underneath and the, the maintenance that you need. So let's go ahead and leave that alone. 
let's t talk about um, if you're not doing this every day, which I'm not. I'm a QA software guy in the daytime. And I don't do this every day, so I have to remind myself how I even make these things. <laughs> and what are those things, the, some of the gotchas? Um, so what you're going to want to do, uh, once you get your blade all settled and the kerf, right, is going to be in the center of your blade, it's the center of the wheel, um, you're going to want to make a practice cut. All right, now, uh, what I did so far is I started to go through this piece here, all right? Um, and the first thing I noticed as soon as I uh, started to eat into the wood was the blade wanted to go uh, one way or the other, uh, even though everything's in the middle. And I couldn't figure out why it was doing that. Um, I do have uh, these here, which help you to, to set the blade uh, so that it's straight for the correct bandsaw. But I am more, I'm one of those guys that if, I, if I'm gonna use it okay, you know, if, if it's that mission critical, which in this case it really isn't for me, um, I'm just going to do it this way. Now, when I was doing the maintenance, because I haven't used this in a long time, um, I noticed, uh, so I set the, the table 90 degrees to the blade. That was good. Well, guess what? When I put the, the, uh, the blade, the block, onto the table, I noticed that the block, and even in this case, is this much off. Watch this. Okay? So here's how you fix that. What you're going to do is, first of all, make sure your blade is, uh, your machine is unplugged. Now I use one of these guys here so I can step on the, the switch um, and not have to bother with turning the thing on and off because I want my hands to be safe at all times. So. I say if you can see the cord, it's probably not plugged in, <laughs> more than likely. Oh, another tip for you, get a humidity meter. You can see in my, my shop, my humidity is very high, lie, very high right now. It's 63%. Uh, Everything is reversed in the camera right now because I'm using the front facing. Uh, the temperature is 75 degrees. Uh, it fluctuated from 66 to 60% 60 humidity. Okay, so it's good to know what your humidity is. And I do have a dehumidifier running. Uh, at all times. Imagine if I didn't. Wow. Uh, we're getting a lot of rain this year in the Northeast in 2020. We're now officially in July, by the way. All right, I'm trying to move right along here. So, whereas when I had th this piece, when I was practicing, right, um, set like this, okay, it was acceptable, and now it, it is not. So what I'm going to do is raise this up, take my block, Bring it over, loosen the, the two uh, knobs here, okay? And I'm going to knock that into square, okay? It does you no good if this here, oh, it so happens that it is square. Uh, so guess what happened? For the most part, it is. Yes. Um, and that's going to cause your blade to want to go one way or the other, by the way. Uh, that piece I was practicing with wasn't square. Whereas these pieces here are. I went to the jointer into the planer, like I said at the beginning of the video, and uh, I corrected that and I wanted to make sure they were all the same. Okay. I also have these here. These are called uh, GRR Ripper from Microjig. I've got two of them. These are kind of stripped down from all their other pieces and I'm going to use those to keep my hands safe as I run this through uh, the bandsaw, okay? And that's, that's a real good idea to keep your hand safe. Now, I am I would use uh, push the block through without these. The, the, the whole point is that you do what you feel is safe for you, right? That's very, very important, okay? So you, you may see me push these aside, not use them. And as well, oh, I said he was gonna use them. That's because maybe I feel safer use, not using them. It really all depends. All right, um, so let's just say I'll start off using them. The advice is go nice and slow. Um, go, go, go nice and slow. Uh, don't be in a rush. If you're in a rush, then don't work on a bandsaw. That's all I can say. I have a lot of respect for the bandsaw, and you want to do everything you possibly can to be safe on it, like unplugging it when you might be doing other things. All right, so we're really only going to carry out two operations. So this is going to be a part one uh, where... 
where we've gone over all the stuff we went over. Oh, also, I wanted to say, you've heard the saying, practice makes perfect. I want to take that to, to another uh, level and say practice makes permanent. So you can practice, 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 and, practice, and you, you would think, oh, I'm per it's perfect now. No, you may have learned something, and it's not perfect, and now it's permanent. I say practice makes permanent. So practice, 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 and once you get a system, stick to that system. Keep practicing, 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 and that permanent will then be something that is actually going to work out for you. Hopefully that made sense. All right, without further ado, so once again, I'm going to use this. I highly recommend them. I'm, I don't ha I only have one of them, but when I'm working on a tool like this, I want my hands not to have to worry about turning things on and off, okay? So that's a foot switch I can step on, like that. That's going to get the thing moving. All right. So you're like, hey, that was too close to the blade. <laughs> it was a little close, but we're good. All right, so we're going to turn on our dust collection system. We have the jet uh, uh, down to five mi microns, the jet dust collector system. It is amazing. I don't know what I would do without it. I don't have the other one where you hang it on your ceiling. That would be the next level here. So let's get going. I highly recommend also uh, a good set of earmuffs. I'm not going to turn the radio on because I won't be here that long. Um, plus, I don't want to get distracted. I wanted to say one more thing uh, before I started, and that is um, when you're cutting, you know, into your stock, you're better off going too wide, right? Like, you know, go wider than, than, than thinner. Like, if you don't try to make it perfect. Unless you do this every day, then this conversation, we don't have to have it. I don't do this every day. All right, so you want to go on the other side of the line because per adventure, should that blade start turning your block or going the wrong way away from the line, you've got time to recoup. So I say, when you start off, just go nice and slow. goes to show I don't do this every day. So I was like all over the place. But here's the good news about a bandsaw box. There you go, dust on the camera. Um, 
whatever way it came from the stock, it's going to go back exactly perfectly the way it came from itself, right? If that, ma that makes sense. So um, that's not a problem that I was going, you know, here, there, and yonder. Uh, there's a couple things that I, I didn't do that I usually do. I usually get a stool that I stand on top of, so I'm looking, so I'm more over top of the, uh, the table, okay? That will help give me more visibility. You could see that I was trying to follow that line. It was, even though I have two LED lights, 1400 lumens shining, um, that was that. And, you know, so, so there we go. We're going to take that piece. That was piece number one. We're going to set that aside. And now we have to take off uh, the back. Okay? So I'm going to flip this this way. Um, I can see that I need to maybe make a slight adjustment here. Okay? And I'm going to go get that stool. I'm not going to pause the video because I've done that in the past and it's ruined my video. Apologize. I'll be right back. This will take me around 30 seconds. All right, folks, here I come. So this is going to uh, make me feel uh, like I've got a lot more control. Try not to knock over the LED lights. Okay, so this is going to give me quite a bit of uh, the advantage. Now let's see if that, if that helps me out. Obviously I have to lower this now. I dare to say things are going to go a little better for me. Let's go ahead and uh, by my ear protection. Here, here it is. should be you know looking look more my opinion okay looking more down on your your uh, your cut as opposed to straight at it like, like this um, and so I was able to pretty much make a nice uh, straight cut okay so now we have that um, we I tell you what when you're making bandsaw boxes it's easy to get disoriented now what piece am I on now um, that's why I number things. All right, so now we're going to set the back aside and uh, put it over here of where the top is. And now here's where I have to change my blade. Can you imagine if I was going to try and make that turn um, with this big fat blade? Uh, the best I could do is, would be to maybe to start the, the, the job to come down in here and go as far as I can and then come down over here and go as far as I can, right? Um, but we're just going to go ahead and change the blade. Keep blowing dust into the camera. Not the smartest thing to do. Um, so, uh, thanks for uh, the, watching this. Consider this uh, step one. Uh, camera's over there. I keep forgetting. Uh, for working on the bandsaw boxes. Now, naturally, the, the, the more you 
get momentum and you're doing one after another, it's going to look, uh, it's not going to look, it's going to be a lot easier for you. Like I said, I do not do this. This is my retirement plan um, to have this wood shop um, and, and, and have something I can fall back on that I'm really going to enjoy. And I'm glad over the years I've been able to build up the, uh, the, to the tools um, and uh, so on and so forth. So, again, this is, this is actually a series on making these uh, bandsaw boxes. I will very carefully pick you up. Sorry, y'all, on the big TVs. Y'all let me know you don't like that. <laughs> and I don't blame you. Uh, if we come over here, you're going to see all the, all the other wood that I, that I joined up, right? Now, I have it clamped in here. I don't need it wandering off and doing its own thing. If it's clamped together, then it's not going to be going anywhere. I, I, I dare to say that it, it started to move already. Because the, so, th so there you go. And over here, you follow that series. This is uh, find some scrap wood from anywhere um, and make something out of it. So we, but that's another series I'm doing uh, side by side. Uh, at some point, we're going to be, <laughs> keep promising this, put the uh, blade over there, the Shelix. I don't even know what I'm pointing at right there <laughs> uh, onto this. Just know that um, you're going to void your warranty when you put that on here because DeWalt didn't make that. They only had the three blades, right? And so uh, they're like, you're going to, so just know that that's going to be a thing. But uh, hopefully I'll get around to doing that. Again, you're an SC Custom Designs. Hey, if you like what you see. I would appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and hit the bell and subscribe. Um, I've got some, uh, I think, 700 videos on a variety of subjects. And um, lately we've been switching over from Ryobi uh, cordless tools to the DeWalt. And so our last DeWalt tool was a, uh, a skill saw. And uh, look up that review. I think I did that last weekend. Um, and so we got things that we just continue doing here in the wood shop. But my wife is like, get out of the garden. Because I've been in the garden since, well, the beginning of the yearish. And uh, I've done a lot of things out there. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and let you go. And uh, look forward to the next one where we're going to have the other blade on. And we'll just continue. We'll chat less because you can look at this one for reference. Thank you. Shalom uh, Abrachat, Zai Jin, Tot Sins, Shalom Master Lami.